my sitting up to go out to the garden because we're putting the fence in today. Whoop, whoop. I can finally put the rest of my seeds in. I've been holding off because I didn't want the chickens to scratch them up or bunnies or whatever to get in there and do their thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure what all to expect from the critters in our in our area. So let's go out and uh, get these posts in order. Garden one. Here's our pathway. Can I say hi? You can wave. Say hello. Hi. There's our pathway. And then the corner of garden two. And uh, funny story here, we were given these uh, a, a homemade crib by a friend of ours, which ended up being too big. And now we're gonna use the ends of it for the garden gates, which is really fun. So they'll be uniform. They're nice and solid <clears throat> and already weatherproofed. So that's fun. We'll have a gate on both sides of the garden facing to this garden path. Watch where you're going. <laughs> no, sit down. Sit. Good boy. So behind me here is the compost that we've been dumping all our chicken manure and rabbit manure and food scraps in over the winter. And there's a nice steamy pile of compost under there that's developed and I'm gonna give it a good turn this morning. And I'll probably put some of it out in the garden bed before I really start putting things in. Um, Cause I, it's easier to put it out before I make the holes. So I'm just gonna set this on a time lapse and do some fluffing. And uh, once this fence is in, I'll be able to start putting some seeds and my seedlings in the ground. It's not as steamy as it was maybe a month ago. That's okay, it's rained a lot. It's also melting, I've been stirring it. It'll heat back up. And I've got chickens that keep escaping that come and turn it for me. Isn't that right, Luna? Yes, yes. So it'll be good to go. I'm gonna get a thermometer. You can get a compost thermometer that you stick down in there and get a like an approximate, or actually an exact temperature. And then you really know if it's cooking or not because there's when you're doing it with a lot of manure, you wanna make sure it gets to a certain level of heat so that the bad bacteria is being burned off, but the good bacteria is doing its work. So I am gonna look into getting a thermometer since the pile's so big and sticking it in there. But um, I know that some of it's definitely, she's doing binkies. <laughs> oh no, uh, Cindy, she's doing binkies. I gotta show you what a binky is. We're finally able to cut down our rabbit population. <laughs> we had two accidental litters, which left us with 19 rabbits, is that right? You need to get him away from there. 19 rabbits, unexpected. We came here with one. We ended, we ended up having 19 in a very short amount of time. So we were finally able to raise them, decide which ones we were gonna keep and narrow down to five. And today we have the females out and um, if they're really happy, which they are because they love being outside instead of in their cage, they'll do what's called a binky, which is where they like jump up and flip around and. If you catch him doing it, it's really funny. Let's see if we can get one. What you see right here is not what you think. This is actually Lilac, the mom, establishing dominance over her one of her firstborns um, who wants to try to have dominance over Sunny over here. So Lilac is basically telling her, I'm in charge. You are not going to boss around my other baby. This right here is our precious Cinnabon. Hey, Cinny. We call her Sunny because she's the color of cinnamon and she's super sweet, aren't you? Yes. She was in our second litter, and she's the only one we kept of our second litter. Because she had very unique coloring. She had unique coloring, yeah. She's the only one with this sort of orange cinnamon coloring. Right, Because yeah, if you look at Lilac, she has like a brownish color to her. Yeah, Lilac is our Lilac Rex, and then Mistletoe over here is a mixture of a Lilac Rex and her dad, who's a chinchilla. American chinchilla. So anyway, we're letting them run around today and get some fresh grass and sunshine. And then we're gonna let the boys run around, but we have to keep an eye on them because Pepper will dig a bunch of food. Yeah, so this is our rabbits plus the two males that we have in the garage. So I was hoping they'd do a binky for you, but I'm not gonna stand here all day and wait for it. <laughs> now I'm back over to the potato patch. I'm gonna try to get some more potatoes in the ground today. Uh, the potatoes I showed you in the last video, we had chitted and they've been curing since 
Well, I guess that was a week ago, so I've been carrying for a week. So I wanna show you what they look like, and then I'll show you how I'm planning on laying them out in the garden uh, this year, a little differently than last year. I'm, I'm being a more of a traditional garden this year with ro more rows, and I, I will do some inner planting, I will do some companion planting, but right now my goal is just to get the darn plants in the ground. <laughs> and doing it very straight and streamlined is helping me to do that. And then I can come back in and be creative once I've got stuff in the ground on top. All the potatoes that I chitted in my last video. And again, chitted, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G or E-D. I wanna show you something I think is interesting. If you noticed, these are all the ones that I cut and they now have this hard seal on them so they won't mold once they get in the ground. And you see they have their sprouts on them. So this is where the leaf Leaves will come up above the ground. So this will go down and this will go up just like this. These will grow up. But I wanted to show you something because we talked about buying potatoes from, you know, your potatoes you buy from the grocery store and can you or can you not use them? And what this is what I have found. My potatoes from the grocery store, although they may sprout prolifically like this one, they have a tendency to mold whenever I chip them. And I don't know why that is. I haven't done the research behind it but this is not usable now. So I will put that in the compost. This one has a sizable thing on it. Part of me wants to just test it out because they, they are green. They are trying to sprout. It has this mold on the inside of it. So I might just try them in one little spot and see what they do. But all of these that are molded are the ones from the grocery store. That one looks pretty bad. So all of these are going, except for that one that I may test out. This one's, this one's okay. It's got a good sprout on it. I made to keep that one. This one's okay. Um, this was another, and I think this was a um, one from, I can't remember if this one was one from the, um, a seed potato or a um, kitchen potato. I can't remember, but you can see it's got a significant amount of mold on it. So these are all questionables. If I have room for them, I may put them in the ground. But as you can see, all of these have a seal on them so they are ready to go in the ground. This is a seed potato with some mold on it, um, but the rest of it's fine. So I think I'll go ahead and use that one. So let's get this done. Talk about some bad breaking work. Yeah, that is hard work. I don't mind. I need the exercise. I love the exercise, but yeah, it'll do you in. And especially when you know you've got uh, multiple more rows to go. <laughs> I may only get one or two in a day and that's okay. What do you think? Let's see if my line looks straight. There it is. I auto-corrected, came back and moved the potatoes I had put over here, over here to straighten my line out. Then I had to auto correct over here <laughs> to keep my line straight. Found some daffodils in the process. I'm gonna leave those there. You can see those coming up. Uh, I think my trench is probably six to eight inches deep. And now I'm gonna go in and put the potatoes in about six to eight inches apart. And then we're gonna go get some lunch. potato plants that's pretty awesome and what was amazing was it was like the exact number of blue potatoes that I have so this row over here is the mix match one that I made this will be all my really deep bluish purple potatoes um, which is pretty cool and then I still have my my reds my Yukon gold and my russets so I'm figuring I've got three more rows to go I might get one more in today and I'm allowing for about a three foot um, walkway space right in here for wheelbarrows from where we're harvesting so we can walk through t uh, you know 10 plants for pests whenever it's time for harvesting we can get a wheelbarrow through there 
it feels like wasted space in a sense, but I also know how important it is to be able to get in there, um, you know, while we're pruning and harvesting. So I am gonna leave this space. And what's nice is I'd already kind of raked it flat before I got started. And then I was just walking back on forth, forth on it when I was digging and raking. And so now it's nice and flat and I'm gonna come in there and lay some cardboard and probably um, straw on top of that just to keep the weeds at bay. So yeah, we're gonna shoot for a couple more rows right now. It's lunchtime. One thing I did wanna mention if you aren't familiar with planting potatoes is the idea of trenching. Um, my method that I'm doing here is obviously I'm digging a trench of six to eight inches because as the plant grows, you want to cover it with dirt, leaving some of the growth above the dirt, but you don't want to get it a tall, lanky plant um, without the dirt because the dirt helps to bring in more tubers. It's similar to a tomato and that the tomato stem have roots all over it. And if you cover them with dirt, they'll send out more roots. So similar with a potato, if you cover that stem as it grows, it'll send out more shoots uh, to grow potatoes on. So that's the point of the, of the trench. Now, when I'm doing my pathways, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm leaving, I'm trying to get where you, maybe you can see. Um, let me flip it around. It's really hard to get a vantage point here, but this is my trench right here. And I'm leaving dirt mounded on both sides um, above sort of where my walkway is because I wanna use that dirt to eventually fill, continue to fill in as I go. So my walkway is actually, here's a good bit. My walkway is actually <laughs> lower than these trenches because I want to use this dirt to move over the potatoes as they grow. So I put the potatoes about six to eight inches down and I cover them about two to three inches. And then as they grow up, I'll cover them a little bit more and a little bit more. And eventually it'll be more of a mound um, where all this dirt will be mounded between the walkways. So I've got a trench, a walkway, a trench, a mound. This will be my next path. And then here will be my next row. So that's the idea. Another thing you can do um, that uh, I've done in the past, and I, I really kind of wanted to do this year, but I was trying to save money. You can actually um, dig the dirt up like this, or even just lay down cardboard, lay the potatoes on top of the cardboard, and then cover them with straw in the same manner. And we have a local farmer that we can get bales of straw or hay for, you know, $4 or $5 a bale. But my husband encouraged me to use what we have, which is why I'm digging trenches. And that's okay. It's all right. It'll, we had a lot of fun last year digging in the dirt and digging out the potatoes. So that's fine. Um, but you can do that. You can use straw and actually cover the potatoes like that as they grow with more and more straw. And it's easier actually in the end to come in and just move around the straw and pull out the potatoes. So that's another option. If you don't have the ability to dig in the ground like this, you can start from the ground up, lay either, either till the ground and lay the potatoes directly on that and do straw on top, or just come and lay cardboard, lay the potatoes on top of the cardboard and put straw on top of them. Another tac tactic that people have used are like tires. You can put the potato at the bottom of one tire and fill it. And then as it grows, you add another tire and fill it and continue to build the tires up as the plant grows. I have not done that. I think it'd be really interesting to do it. If I come across some tires, I will. Um, my guess is you probably would use three tires max, depending on how thick they are. Uh, but my potato plants last year probably got to about three and a half, four feet tall just for an estimation. So anyway, I hope that gives you some tips on potatoes. I will tell you a zillion times that potatoes are one of my favorite things to grow. They're super easy. There is not a lot of maintenance um, and they're really fun to harvest. So if you like potatoes, I really encourage you to grow them and you can plant them up through June. So it is not too late to get started. Go to your local tractor supply store, get them there. I've seen them at Lowe's, you can order them. But if you order them, you're really kind of taking a gamble with shipping. Um, so I would suggest go getting some organic seed potatoes at Tractor Supply, Lowe's, or Home Depot and get going. All right, we'll see you back at it in a bit.
that's not a cat on a hot tin roof, but it is a black cat on our roof. What are you doing, Leroy? I, I, told, you, I told you I'd let you out if you've got This is a I this is a first. What are you doing up there and how are you going to get down? That is hilarious. All right, well, we gotta go back to building the fence. Good luck, Leroy. We wish you the best. <laughs> he could jump down from there. <coughs> we now have one garden fenced in. What, what? Feels super official to have a garden fenced in. Means I can actually plant. Now we're starting garden number two. Hi. So here we go. Hi. Yeah.